Hey internet, Eric here, and I'm actually not alone. Uh, I have my daughter Boo over here, and um, she. this is not her first time being on, I guess you say camera, or discussing something. She was with us when we did the Attack of the Crab Monsters video. Yeah. And when I ate the 30-year-old piece of bubble gum. Um, okay. Now, if you're new to my channel, uh, the, all, everything this year is going to be, dis everything I discuss on this channel is going to be movies I've never seen before. And I didn't even know this existed until maybe a year or so ago. I don't remember. You remember how we found out about this? Uh, I think there was a Nostalgia Critic video on it. Okay, there might have been the Nostalgia Critic. And it's Mario related. My daughter is obsessed with Mario. She knows a lot about it, but not even she knew this existed. So we th I thought it would be funny to discuss this video and have her sit down and discuss it with me. Because like I said, she knows she's... The Mario Expert, 1986's Japanese Super Mario Brothers, The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach. Doesn't that look like garbage? All right, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, what have you. Okay, boo. Correct me if I'm wrong when the, when if I get anything wrong. We're going to really... I don't know how we're going to discuss this since, you know, I'm going to make it easy for the boo, but... The movie starts off, and Mario is playing the Famicom, which is Nintendo before it was a Nintendo, right? Yeah, it was basically just the Japanese NES. Okay. So he's playing that. It looks like he's playing Earthbound because it looks like he's playing NES, you know, and he's got the baseball bat and all that stuff. For some reason, uh, Luigi walks in, tells him to go to bed. Luigi leaves. And then for some reason, Princess Peach appears on the game, right? Yeah. And she's being chased by Bowser. And she literally jumps out of the TV screen? Yeah, um, and then all of the, like, the bad enemies, like, they just, and they make a mess of his house and come into the real world, and then they drag Mario in back into the game with them? Well, they drag Peach in there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so what happens is, you know, Peach, Peach jumps out of the TV, because she can, I guess, um, and then she is immediately followed by all the monsters, like the Goombas and the Spineys and everybody, and then we see Bowser on the TV, and he reaches his whole freaking hand out of there, pulls himself out, and he's got to be 10 feet tall. And chaos happens, like the boo says. He grabs uh, Peach, escapes back to the TV, and Luigi walks in. Mario tries to tell him what happens, and Luigi thinks Mario's crazy. Yeah. And then we he finds uh, Peach's necklace. Yeah, it, it, it randomly spawns out of nowhere in the middle of his house because it wasn't in his house before and it just immediately like spawned there. Yeah, so he picks up the, the necklace, shows it to Luigi, and then it's the next day. So now, the very next day, we find out that the Mario Brothers, who everyone knows are plumbers, are I'm not... grocery workers. Yeah, they're grocery workers. They work at a grocery store. And they have this regular customer, this old lady who walks in and, you know, Mario, because he's so obsessed with what the necklace is, he messes up her order. Not funny. Luigi finds out about it. He happens to have a random book on the shelf that tells you what this uh, necklace is. And it says what the Mushroom Kingdom is. Even though that's like a video game universe. Right. And then so they decide, hey, because for some reason, we'll get to it. Luigi is so, he's like uh, Scrooge McDuck. He's like so obsessed with being rich for something, for some reason. I don't know why. He, like every time they find gold coins, Luigi's probably there. And like in one moment of the movie, there's a bunch of gold, like gold coins everywhere. Mm -hmm. And Luigi was the one picking them up and obsessing over them. Yeah, he was obsessed over it. Mario actually wanted to rescue the princess. Well, they find out what the... the the necklaces, I don't remember. Um, we watched this dubbed, so the the it's not the movie's fault, obviously, because you know they're originally speak, speaking Japanese. It's kind of hard to follow with the voices, and the voices are awful, because Mario kind of talks like this, and Luigi he, he talks like this and stuff like that, and it's hard to follow and listen to him. Anyways, so they're talking about what it what the uh, necklace is, and this. Weird blue dog caterpillar thing. The dog pillar. We call him the dog pillar. Comes into the grocery store, 
steals the, uh, I keep calling call it an amulet, the necklace, and runs away. They go chase him down a bunch of pipes. Like, there's a bunch of pipes everywhere. And then they start disappearing? And then they start disappearing just for the heck of it. And then Mario and Luigi are transported into the Mushroom Kingdom, but they land in a cave with... Mushroom God. Who, who Boo is calling the Mushroom God. He is this really tall, long-bearded, wizard-looking dude. And he, I don't know if he says what the uh, the powers are of the necklace, but he does tell the, the story of the Mushroom Kingdom. Bowser invaded, turned all the, the the toads, the mushroom people, into bricks. This is, a, as weird as it sounds, that is in the actual instruction booklet of the first NES game. Um, and the Mario Brothers decide, hey, we're going to go rescue Princess Peach, stop Bowser, and save the day. For some reason, the dog a pillar follows them. So... Now they're going from world to world, and they keep bumping into these two Goombas who have the most English and normal sounding voices out of everybody in this video, or in this movie, and they keep trying to trick them, right? Do you remember the first thing they do? Um, they tell Luigi and Mario that they have, like, some food in, like, a cave or whatever, and they follow them to, like, it's full of mushrooms. That's right. <laughs> Because Luigi is... A, first off, I hate Luigi in this movie. Boo will tell you I'm a huge Luigi supporter. I love Luigi. He's one of my favorite characters. I absolutely hate him in this. Because he's so money hungry. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. He's such a jerk. And he's also a whiny crybaby. And not like, you know, scared Luigi that we're used to. No, he's a whiny crybaby. I hate him in this. So they're, they're, they have a little campfire going. And... Luigi's hungry, he goes and finds some mushrooms, and Mario finds him laughing because they're happy mushrooms, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. And then, um, but Mario knows what a happy mushroom looks like. So then Mar <laughs> Luigi, what, eats a sad mushroom, and he knows what a sad mushroom looks like. It's really freaking stupid. <laughs> um, I don't remember how they get out of that. Oh, something happens. I don't know if they fight some bad characters or something but then who's that weird mystical mushroom lady that shows up and gives Mario uh it's it's like some like after he like saves them all or whatever like the toads appear and they like they think Mario for saving them blah 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 and there's this toad lady that my dad thinks is terrifying she is creepy she she's all white like an albino and she just got this toad hat and she said she was princess peach's servant so she she freed them um, and she t she tells Mario all about the power-ups, kind of like in the new movie we saw. So she tells him about the mushroom, the fire flower, and I don't I think they just call it the power star or something like that. Yeah, it's originally changes. Uh, then it's uh, it's now called the superstar. I think. Right. So they're they're going through their they're going through from world to world to world. They're fighting piranha plants and this and that, and it's it's. It's so hard to follow. It's so weird. In my opinion, it's kind of boring. And then the one thing I will say about this, though, I like when they're walking from place to place. They have this kind of fun Japanese song playing that me and you were kind of getting into. Mm -hmm. And then the weird stuff happens again. Mario is, uh, you know, hit, jumping up and hitting blocks. Coins are flying out. And then uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> So he hits the, the, the block, the gold coins come out, you know, Luigi goes crazy because, you know, I got to have money. And they're talking about how they need food and they need some. So Mario just happens to hit the block that had ramen, <laughs> so, ramen noodles, if he couldn't get that out. She, she, so, she can't handle it. And they just eat ramen noodles. Like, seriously, they punch the thing. And I don't know if it's a bowl or if it's like the Chinese takeout thing, but they're eating ramen noodles. It's, it's weird. So they fight piranha plants. And then something happens. Oh, they get attacked by a gigantic uh, Koopa Troopa that takes them away and puts them in the nest and is trying to feed it to their babies. And then they decide to climb the mountain and get away. And then what happens? Oh, they find this, the star that yeah. falls in the ocean. And then Mario has to go after it because he needs it for some reason. They haven't stated why. Right. Um... He dives into the water to go get it. Yeah. And I was yelling Mario was going to die before he even gets the star. Um, and what happens? Luigi doesn't even know what's going on because he's busy being upset because at the top of the mountain, 
he all of his gold coins, he's got this big sack, and he finds out that it's an illusion. And what's inside of it? It looks like doorknobs. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like pine cones or something. Pine cones or something stupid like that. So he's all depressed. He doesn't even try to save Mario, and Mario's drowning. Um, so Mario goes down. He battles bloopers and a weird cheap cheap that puffs up and up, you know, like like it inflates like a balloon, and then it explodes, and all these millions of cheap cheaps come out. It, it's it's really weird. So eventually, Mario finds the star. They find this. Uh, like sunken. No, wait. There's another thing that I need. To okay, go ahead. <laughs> um. Okay. So the star falls into a clam's mouth. Oh, that's right. The clam part. Okay. <laughs> so Mario loses the star, and he's going around and around and around trying to find it. He's you know getting rid of the, getting rid of the bloopers that we call bloopy. He's getting away from the cheap cheeps, and he sees that the star is inside a clam. Okay, so, so he tries, and then, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, the clam's mouth shut, so, and he tries to open it, but he can't, so he decides to distract the clam, and <laughs> he dresses up as a ballerina, and the dog pillar plays guitar. Yeah, so let's distract the clam and make it happy. He's, like, seriously, ballerina Mario doing the twirls and stuff like that. dog pillar is playing an electric guitar underwater. He's got a star on his face like he's Paul Stanley, and it works. So they get the, the star. Now, we forgot to mention this. While all this is happening, Peach is being held captive by Bowser. Yeah. And Bowser is talking about how he's in love with Peach. He's going to marry her against his will. We all know the story because Bowser's always been in love with Peach. He's always wanted to marry her kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Um, so Bowser is basically an X-Man. He yes. can transform. Yeah, he is explaining to Peach who he is, blah, blah, blah. And Boo just said, yeah, she, he's an X-Man. He's basically Mystique or Morph. For some reason, because we know he's a dragon or a giant mutant turtle, whatever. Uh, he breathes fire and Peach calls him a dragon. So for the sake of this movie, we're going to call him a dragon. Even though I don't believe he is. <laughs> okay. Um, and he's telling her you know, who he is. And for some reason, he just says that he can shapeshift. And... Um, do you remember what he shapeshifts into first? Like he, a weird scarecrow. Yes. He's trying, because Peach is upset. She's crying. She wants to go home. She's sad, you know, because she's being taken against her, her will. And Bowser, who is such a doofus, and he's supposed to be a, kind of a dork in, like, all the games and the movies and stuff. He's trying to cheer her up. It's like, you know, when a little baby, you know, is crying, you know, you, you have toys in her face and shake it type of thing. He morphs into a weird-looking scarecrow. And then a weird-looking, like, fat ballerina. Yeah, he then morphs into, uh, I don't remember what she calls it, but he just morphs into this huge, like, really fat, bald lady. <laughs> and then Princess Peach, you know, she's laughing and laughing, and then she tells him to morph into a teddy bear. Now, I thought he was... Now, remember, Bowser is, like, ten feet tall. He's, like, he's huge. I thought he was going to morph into, like, a gigantic Bowser-sized bear. He morphs into, like, a tiny teddy bear and i don't know how peach gets like a lock not a locket but like a lock box like she has like a little like chest and since he's a tiny teddy bear she can trap him in there but he morphs the the like the chest into himself for some reason he morphs the chest yeah she locks him in so he's inside if he wants to morph he should anytime he morphs he'll be what he turns into Inside the chest. No, the chest itself morphs back into Bowser. Okay. So now we're back to the Mario Brothers. Mario's no longer the ballerina. And they find this old pirate ship, this crashed pirate ship or whatever. Yeah. Right? And because um, that's in that's in uh, 64. So this is where we, we're getting a lot of like things from like 64. A lot of the music I like. It's from 1980. I don't think they would have known that. Well, this is from 86, but I think that's where they got the ideas. Like they mm -hmm. kind of pull, like let's pull this out of this way, let's pull this out of that. Okay. And I do like the music when it's not like that happy Japanese song. It is music from the game. You know, from like level four, all those type of music. You know, the underwater level has the underwater music. And Mario pulls the sail down. And he's able to get it moving by blowing underwater and making the, the, the ship rise up into <laughs> the sky. And he's still blowing and blowing and blowing while Bloopy is hanging up underneath it. 
And then they whack him into the side of a mountain, and then he flies away. And then, oh, before that, we were wondering what happened to Luigi. Mm -hmm. Luigi is on a teeny tiny island with one palm tree all by himself. And instead of worrying about, oh, I wish I could go home, my, my brother might be dead. Money. He, he's got no money. All he says is, oh, I'm aboard. That's all he's worried about. Mario picks him up, and then they go fly, and they're on their way to um, Rescue Princess Peach. Yeah. Now, I don't remember much about the wedding. They get captured, and they get thrown in prison. Nothing important happens. I don't remember how they break out. Do you remember how they break out of the jail? Um, Luigi finds a way out by digging um, into the floor. That's right, because Luigi's got a shovel with him because he's always digging for money. They dig their way into, like, level 1-4, you know, with the fire sticks and stuff like that. And they get out. They rescue Princess Peach. And then there's a fight scene between them and Bowser, right? Yeah. And, like, meanwhile, Luigi's digging for some more money. And then he hits, like, some sort of pipeline or whatever and causes the castle to flood and cave in. Yeah. Okay. So the castle crashes, you know, because of the, the water. Mario um, gets his butt kicked by bowser mm -hmm. again luigi's gone because luigi is he's, he's underneath the, the ground because the castle crumbled on him he just happens to pop out right where mario is oh mario i found the star oh luigi feed it to me so he has to eat the star to become invincible mario and he does he beats up bowser and it's the animation is insane. Like, he keeps, like, rapid punching him, Bowser, in the stomach. And then he grabs him by his tail and whooshes him around and then flings him, which he explodes into a firework. Yeah. So which, he, which they actually do in some Mario games. Like, if you kick Bowser off into the sky or whatever, there's a firework where you launched him. Okay. I know it's how you defeat him in Mario 64, because you got to grab him by the tail, spin him around, and throw him into some bombs. And that's, that's how they defeat him in... The new Mario Brothers movie, too. Like, remember they spin him around, they throw him? Yeah. But after he blows up into some fireworks, then we see him floating around with a balloon carrying him or something. He's, like, wiping his tears and waving bye-bye. It's stupid. So Bowser's defeated. <laughs> <laughs> the dark world turns back into the Mushroom Kingdom. It's all looking pretty and everything. And then... The um, <laughs> go ahead. Pillar. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the Taga Pillar... It turns into um, a prince. Right. Now, the problem is... Now, it's okay that this is this some character that we've never seen before. Uh, Mario gives her back the, the necklace, and she said it was from her, her parent, or her mother that, that passed away. Yeah. Because we don't really know anything about her parents. Yeah. We're assuming her dad's still alive, because if she's the princess, that means the king's still alive. Yeah. Okay. We find out that, you know, Mr. Dogger Pillar is now Prince Toadstool. Her fiance, Mario has a uh, he has a hissy fit. He faints because you know he's in love with Princess Toadstool. We had this weird dream sequence where Mario was dreaming that they were married and they were having a dance and spinning around. Um, but everything turns out okay. We get the weird, creepy um, servants with the weird faces that that Boo thinks I'm scared of. We get uh, the Mushroom God, and she likes to come. He pops up and you know says, "Hey guys, how's it going?" or something like that. And Mario and Luigi, they walk off. The stupid, mean toadstools can't even find some way to fly them back to the uh, the pipes. They have to walk. They have to trek this whole way back to get into the pipes. And that's how the movie ends. That's it. Bowser's defeated, flies away. We'll talk about the after credit sequence in a second. Flies away. And it's just them walking through the ending credits. Um, and that's it. Awful song. I, this is the only song I don't like, is when they're walking uh, to go back to the pipes to Brooklyn. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't really state where, they're, where they live. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> Going back to the real world. And then before the MCU or anything else had any after the credit sequence, we are back at the grocery <laughs> store. Yeah, and, and then the same old lady from the beginning who's Mario's uh, order messed up. Yeah. Um... She says, like, I hope Mario doesn't mess up my order this time. And then we just hear, we hear, don't worry, we hired someone new. And then um, she states what she wants, blah, blah, blah. 
it's Bowser who comes with their order and she screams like, ah! And then it freeze says, game over. That's Super Mario Brothers. What is it? Super Mario Brothers. The great mission to rescue Princess Peach. Now, I'm going to tell you this and then I'll get the booze opinion. I did not like this. I did not like this at all. Uh, I thought, uh, and I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to give it some fault for the voiceovers. It was awful. The voiceovers were awful. But again, this was originally in Japanese, so that's not technically its fault. But Mario was a dork. I hated Luigi so much because he was just such a jerk, and all he obsessed with about was money. Bowser was just weird. There's a dog pillar that makes no sense. We have Prince Toadstool. Um, ramen noodle. Oh, what's the thing with the rice? I didn't put that down. Okay. But, but, um. Do you remember what it when was? When Mario, um, like, wants to, like, fight Bowser, he eats the mushroom, wants to get the power, whatever. But all of a sudden, a bag of rice appears. Yes. Yeah, so what, so he eats the super mushroom, doesn't grow. He eats the, the fire flower, no fire powers. A bag of rice just happens to appear. He tears it open, has a has a bowl and chopsticks on hand, pours it there, and then eats it. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. So, obviously, there is, you know, a different culture, you know, Japanese and American, but I still didn't understand it. The only things I really liked, like, I didn't even like the animation. The only things I liked were was that song when they were just walking down on their mission, you know, that happy Japanese song. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. If you are a Nintendo fan... If you love Mario, you got to at least watch this just to say you watched it. But I will never watch this again. It's only an hour long. I know you people on YouTube, you have wasted more time watching more videos like this on YouTube than watching this. So you can handle an hour. But I'll never watch it again because it was also kind of boring. Now, let's go to the boo. Anything good you liked about this movie? Okay, I kind of liked... Okay, um... So I kind of liked the, the beginning sequence. Like I like kind of how like the video game characters come into the real world, kind of like like in the Mario movie. Okay. And I also kind of like. And just uh, because just because I don't like something doesn't mean you can't I say you like. I love the ending scene so much. She does love the she does love the lady who just goes ah, after Bowser gives her the groceries. <laughs> Anything else you like specifically? Just because uh, I just because I don't like this movie. Now doesn't... I'll tell the things I don't like about. Okay, this so movie. she liked two things in this whole movie. Now, what is it you didn't like? One, like my dad says, it's very boring. Yes. But it does get fun in some parts. We can say that. Um, Be Enter ballerina Mario. I think I don't know if fun is the right word. I think bizarre <laughs> is more of a word, but okay. Um, because uh, Enter ballerina Mario, uh -huh. <laughs> and. What else did you not like? Um, I also don't really like, like, sometimes, like, the animation is also really weird. Because at one moment, Mario transforms into a Mexican. He does! Okay, I forgot. He gets <laughs> mad at, he just left Mushroom God, no, or he's mad at Mushroom God or something like that. And he literally turns into, like, I think they're called a, a Caballero. He has... The hat, he's got the bandoleros with the guns, and he's running around, and he even says, wait a minute, I thought I was Italian, why am I Mexican? <laughs> I don't know. It makes no sense. Anything else you want to say before we end this? I would say, if you are a Nintendo fan, you like weird things, watch this. I would watch this again for the fun of it, and see how really weird it is. Okay, remember, she's also 12, so she doesn't know any better. Um, anyways... I had, I had fun watching this with her. It's definitely something to watch with Mario fans so you can maybe talk about what's going on. But myself personally, I do not recommend Super Mario Brothers, The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach unless you really want to watch something that makes absolutely no sense. So with that, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Comment below. Have you seen this movie? Hey, do you like this movie? If you do, God bless you. Why? Tell me below. Did you even know this exists? All that stuff. Uh, this Friday is Friday the 13th. Frenzy and I are reuniting to discuss the Friday the 13th timeline. I got other things planned. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for the boo.
to, to join me this, uh, joining me here in this one episode. I was not going to watch this movie alone. So thank you for suffering through it with me. And uh, cheers.